Okay, Recon's video on Saturday, the 3rd of September 2022. It's just gone 10.31 a.m. Chicago time. Do hope you are doing well. So, this video is going to talk about the TradeStation 10 chart settings that I use. I uh, got a very nice email from Richard a couple of weeks ago asking about the bar spacings that I use in the charts that you see in these videos. So I'm going to respond to that, plus some of the other chart settings in TradeStation 10 that I find very useful. But before getting onto charts, just to say uh, we're in Capri, on the island of Capri, in uh, Italy, having a lovely time. It's beautiful here, very hot. And we're in a nice hotel, but we are above one of the famous Italian beach clubs. And uh, it's very quiet at the moment, but from time to time, they switch on their music incredibly loud. And so uh, if you hear some loud Italian pop going off in the background, that's what it is. Hopefully uh, we shan't get interrupted. But anyway, let's talk about chart settings in TradeStation 10. Uh, the first window I've got to show you here is three windows kind of side by side where I look at three time frames uh, kind of all together. They're a factor of three different uh, because I find uh, the multiple of three between time frames incredibly useful as a way of ratcheting it up from the lowest to the intermediate to the highest time frames. So we've got an E-mini chart here, uh, first of all starting with a 500 tip bar chart, then three times that 1500 tip bar chart, and three times that a 4500 tip bar chart. What's nice about this is that we can line up these charts so that even though there are bar spacings that are different between the charts, uh, they all kind of line up vertically at the same spot. And the way you do that is by checking the bar spacings and the spacings to the right. And in TradeStation, the easiest way to get to that is to double click on a window. Bang, bang. There we go. And you can see uh, these two settings here, the chart properties, bar spacing and bars to the right. So in the low, lowest time frame, uh, what I do is set uh, the bar spacing to 1 and the space to the right to be 9. For the second chart, we do the same thing, double click. The bar spacing is 3 here, so it's 3 times the time frame of the lower time frame chart. And if you set the space to the right to 4 bars, they'll line up nicely. And then going to the third chart, we go here, and the bar spacing here is again 3 times that, which is bar spacing of 9, and spaces to the right uh, being 1. If you use all of those settings, plus set the right axis to, say, a manual 8, I think that's, I don't think it's pixels, but it's uh, digits, maybe, uh, to the right-hand side, so that they're all kind of lined up with a manual uh, spacing. What you'll find is all three charts kind of line up nicely. So there we go, bar spacing. Uh, 1 and 9 for the first chart, 3 and 4 for the second chart, and 9 and 1 for the third chart. And I'll put all of these uh, this information in the description to this YouTube video, so you can kind of uh, copy-paste that and take it away with you. The other question I got from Richard was to do with the bar spacings that I typically use on my charts, and I'll show you another chart here. This just happens to be Apple on a daily chart. Uh, using the traditional view of the better indicators with the volume-based indicators on the left-hand side and the price-based indicators on the right-hand side. And you'll really only uh, ever see me use kind of two bar spacings that I find useful. It's kind of bar spacing of one or two in order to kind of uh, pump up the view to be able to see what's going on. So if we show this chart here, we're either looking at a kind of long-term chart with a one bar spacing or just moving it up to a two bar spacing to be able to see a little bit more detail and a little let less back history. So that's uh, another kind of question from Richard to do with bar spacing. So I hope I've answered that. Then uh, let's talk about uh, the customization of the symbol here. And here's where I go to one of the uh, hotkeys that I use that I've set up, where I go Control D, and that opens up the customized symbol window here. And let's talk about a couple of these settings. So the first one is when we look at customized symbol settings, it allows us in this to look at either a tick bar chart, a minute, or a daily chart, and I'll only ever use a tick bar, a minute, or a daily chart. Typically, my tick bars run from, from a minimum of, uh, say, 100 uh, tick bar chart to 13,500 is about the largest tick bar chart that I use, and that's for uh, a kind of a medium-term e-mini chart. And the reason for that is after you get above uh, 13,500 ticks, because I'm needing to load quite a lot of back history here, 5,000 bars, Talking a lot about talking about a lot of data that needs to kind of come through, so the kind of practical maximum setting for a tick bar you'll find is is thirteen thousand five hundred is kind of the, the max that you can use. 
With most of these, what I do is I set 5,000 bars back. The better indicators use quite a lot of back history because you've got all three time frames on one chart. Uh, it needs quite a lot of back history in order to stabilize the calculations. So tick bar charts that up to uh, from 100 to 13,500 with a uh, bar back setting of 5,000. When you look at minute charts here, I'll be uh, using kind of the lowest minute chart I'll use, about a 15 minute chart to either a 135 minute chart for three bars per day in the day session of an e-mini or 460 minutes, uh, which is kind of a typical session uh, for Forex trading like 23 hours a day. So 15 minutes all the way to 460 minutes. And again, I'll also use a barback calculation of about 5,000 here uh, for minute charts. And then on daily charts here, there's no settings um, in kind of the detail, but I'll do, I'll, we'll, we'll set this back to maybe about 20 years uh, for back history on a daily chart. Maybe much more than you kind of require, but uh, I like to be on the safe side and have enough kind of data punched into a chart so I can kind of scroll through the chart and look back. So another setting to uh, kind of be cognizant of is the trade volume setting here. You want to set this, there's usually two choices, trade volume and tick count, because we're looking at uh, you know, kind of real volume rather than uh, an approximation of volume. Tick count, uh, not so useful. I'll try and use the trade volume if it's available there. And also on minute bar charts, for um, bar building, use session hours. You don't want to be using natural hours. The difference is, you know, we start the day session of the E-mini at 8.30 a.m. So the bars will start, the day session bars will start building from exactly 8.30 a.m. Whereas if you were using uh, natural hours, it would start from 8 a.m. We want to kind of stick with the session of the contract that we are looking at. So use trade volume and session hours there. The other setting that uh, is a bit of a bugbear for me is to display the charts in the time zone of the exchange. You've got a couple of choices here. Some people use local for their charts, which shows the time that they are looking at the chart, their computer time effectively, to uh, mark the time stamps on uh, charts. I think that's incorrect because we share charts between uh, traders and we could be in different time zones. And so the most logical thing is to set the time zone to the exchange time zone so that everybody who trades the e-mini is looking at an e-mini chart with central time, Chicago time being the time stamps so that we can kind of look at compare times and say, this is what I saw on my chart at you know 10.32 a.m. And someone will know they know that's Chicago time uh, because they're trading that instrument. If you're trading stocks, you know, the logical time zone uh, for you know the American stock markets is New York. So... Uh, that's kind of a consideration there. But it is a bit of a bugbear for me. Sometimes I kind of uh, gently tell people off in emails that they sent to me with charts, but uh, just bear that in mind. The time zone, if you set it to exchange, particularly if you're traveling around, you know, just being consistent about that, I think, is important. So what else can we talk about? Uh, we've got the style here as well of the settings. I'm always using the open, high, low, close, blah, and I just set all of this to uh, the default settings in trade stations. I know people are very keen on candlesticks. I don't understand the fascination with candlesticks. For me, the opening price is the least uh, interesting price uh, of all the bars. You know, it's the closing and the high and low that's more important. Why you kind of structure your charts around the candlestick, which visually is emphasizing the open, for me doesn't kind of make sense, but uh, you know, different traders make different choices. For me, open, high, low, close, and you can get far more bars kind of compressed into a chart with an open, high, low, close, which is another kind of useful kind of consideration. Another setting here that I find quite important is on the scalings, uh, setting the subgraph uh, to have plus or minus 5%. And let me just show you that on this chart. Whoa, that's just, uh, I just changed that chart. Stupid me. Anyway, let's go back to this with the daily chart, bang. And here you can see on this chart now, with the scaling, we've added 5% above and below the price bars. So we've got a little bit of space in here. And that's helpful if you have signals on indicators that you use that kind of sometimes print above uh, the markers there. So on this chart, we've got the plus minus 5%. On the chart on the right, we don't. You can see uh, those signals with exhaustion buying and bearish divergence uh, are cut off uh, at the top of the chart there. But when we add the spacing at the top uh, on this um, other chart on volume here, you can see those uh, exhaustion patterns show quite clearly in the range of the chart. And from time to time, there might be uh, little signals that you kind of miss 
uh, because you've not got that extra space on the chart and it might just pop above the price bars and not be noticed. So it's worth kind of considering that. And let's go back to the scaling. Lastly, properties. Now, uh, I use the default settings on all of these, on all of the symbols, with the exception of Bitcoin and Ethereum. For some reason, uh, when you click on um, this, you can get the detail on the sessions, uh, and they're correct on almost everything, with the exception of uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum in TradeStation. Bitcoin and Ethereum trades 24-7, uh, and the charts for Bitcoin and Ethereum in TradeStation, for whatever reason, are set up to be 24-6, and they don't have the Sunday data. So that's a manual modification that you need to do in order to go in and get the full sessions uh, 24 7 uh, in uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum. And if you're interested in kind of the detail on how to do that, uh, the Bitcoin uh, cryptocurrency article on eminiwatch.com uh, has the details on how to do that. So there we go. Uh, that is uh, the bar spacings with the window customizations that I have, the symbol customizations uh, that I use. And lastly, I'm just going to show you where you can set your hotkeys. And that is right clicking on a chart, go to settings, and then, whoops, off, off the screen. Let's do that again. Settings, and then hotkeys uh, down here. And in here, you can program all of your favorite kind of hotkey settings. Now, what I will do is copy paste this information uh, for you in the description of the video down below because these are the settings that I use. Um, so for uh, moving to the next workspace, the previous workspace, copying and pasting a window, looking at the message center in order to look uh, for alerts that have been triggered, then customizing uh, the symbol, decreasing bar spacings, increasing bar spacings, and uh, putting pointers on charts. Those are all the particular hotkeys that I use, and you can kind of uh, go in and manually change uh, any of these. So for example, file, go to uh, next workspace on this right screen, there we go. And then here I've got control right as my uh, particular hotkey that I use uh, to get around my chart. So hotkey is very handy for getting around between screens uh, very quickly in uh, TradeStation. So I suggest you use some of those. Uh, one of the hotkeys that is not in there and I think is a default uh, which moves me between charts is control tab. You can see this uh, screen chart is active. Then I move to the next one with just control tab. So I think that's just a default that's used in TradeStation, but I use that a lot. And then lastly, just to show you these two settings here. So uh, you can link the symbols and the intervals for these charts uh, kind of side by side. So this is the symbol lock uh, between the chart on the left and the chart on the right, because they're both uh, the same color. And then the interval is exactly the same thing, where we've uh, locked the interval between the two uh, charts uh, so they move simultaneously. So for example, if you wanted to change this to be a weekly chart, you do that and you can see it's changed weekly on both symbols. If you wanted to change the symbol to meta, there we go. Uh, it's changed the symbol and the interval and that's a handy way of setting up kind of chart templates where you can rip through a bunch of different symbols. So there we go, a uh, quick summary of the TradeStation 10 chart settings that I use. And if you're a TradeStation user, I hope that was of interest to you.